50 years of dedicated peacekeeping services to their credit. <laughs> and here they come behind you. The ladies down at the IUNDA, give them a round of applause as they're coming up the street there. They're also followed by the Newtown and Kennedy Scouts Group under the leadership of Susan Rowe and Stephen Kim. And the piper there, Christy O'Dwyer. And in the group this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, we have the children from the sixth class of Newtown and Kennedy Primary School with their principal, Mrs. Carmel Dempsey. <laughs> Delighted to have on board the Dirk, the Dirk and Dog School of Irish Dancing, led by Ethan DeGreen and Hannah Longmore, who recently qualified as a dance teacher. <laughs> and the Newtown Ladies Gaelic Football Squad, members of the Junior Champs, sorry, Members of the Junior Championship winning team, led by the current captain, Chris, Kirsty Mooney, followed by the Newtown DAA, led by Jay Power. And last but not least, we have the ladies of Newtown ICA, led by Deborah Draven. Give them a round of applause.
Ladies and gentlemen, our brawler now will play two tunes, followed by the song Banner Strand, to introduce us to the life and times of Robert Monteith.
Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome on stage to read a poem, Mary Byrne. Sorry. <laughs> Isn't it great being live? Banis <laughs> ran. <laughs> Was on an April morning, Good Friday was the day. A German ship was sailing beyond our in the bay with twenty thousand rifles already far to land. But from the shore Sir Roger said he said No comrade here to meet me Alas, they must be dead But I must do my duty Today I mean to land So in a struggle Robert Monteith. Robert Monteith was born in Woodstock, Newtown, Mount Kennedy, in 1878. He was a nationalist, poet, and visionary. He joined the British Army, but became disillusioned with empire 
and he left the army to join the fight for Irish freedom. He joined the Irish Volunteers in 1914 and drilled them in the use of arms. Eamon de Valera was among his trainees. He was sacked from his job in the Ordnance Survey Office and banned from living within a 50-mile radius of Dublin. Thus began a life of hardship, on the run from agents of the British Army, while endeavouring to put food on the table for his family. He was detailed by Thomas Clark to go to Germany to assist Roger Casement in seeking help for the Irish volunteers. Together with Casement, he successfully negotiated help. He secured 20,000 rifles, and these were loaded on the Ord, bound for Tralee. They arrived in Tralee Bay on Good Friday, the 21st of April, 1916. They attempted to land the weapons on Banner Strand, but due to poor organization on the ground, the venture failed. Roger Casement was now a very sick man, and he rested in nearby Kenneth's Fort while Monteith went for help. They were betrayed to the RIC. Casement was arrested, and Monteith went on the run. The Ord was discovered by the British and scuttled by the German crew. The consignment now lies at the bottom of Cork Harbour. Casement was captured, and Monteith had a price on his head. It read, dead or alive, preferably dead. <laughs> he took refuge in a Capuchin friary in Cork. From there, he escaped to America, enduring hardship as a ship's stoker, eventually arriving in New York a sick and broken man. When he recovered, he was pursued from job to job by agents of the British Secret Service. Eventually, he secured a job in the Ford Motor Company in Detroit. And there he stayed until he retired in 1943. Now Bob wanted to come home, but his health was weak due to old wounds and recurring malaria. Tisha Gavin de Valera wrote to him and told him not to come home, as there was nothing for him here. He did, however, return to Ireland, and he first lived in Kilcool and then moved to Dublin. The officials of the Irish state ignored him. Even the military pension officials refused to give him his due pension. Despite his poor health, Bob completed a book he was writing, Casement's Last Adventure. In 1953, Bob and his wife Molly, suffering from failing health and disillusionment, returned to their family in the USA. Bob died on February 18, 1956, at his home in Michigan. A little tricolor flag found in Casement's pocket, stained by the waters of the Kerry coast, was put into his coffin. Er yes day, Gorawa Anam Delish. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome Edmund Monteith Hughes, Brian Nevis, Canon Robert Jennings, Jennings and Chris Farrington to come forward and unveil the monument of Robert Monteith.
ladies and gentlemen, we request Canon Smith and Canon Jenkins Jennings to bless the monument. Now the blessing of this beautiful monument. Lord, we come to bless this monument in your most holy name. The holy water with which we bless this monument is a reminder of our baptismal calling and welcome into your church. We pray that the blessing of this monument in your name will bring life to all who visit this community. May Christ guide the people 